going to be trying to bolster his gateway forces. The key, of course, is going to be protecting those Void Rays long enough from uh, Druby's Marines. <laughs> really, yes. that's essentially all it comes down to. There's no real anti-air other than that until a lot of investors start hitting the field for cats. Yeah, and Druby actually going over to a heavy MMM build. Cats, he does have those Infestors coming up, like you mentioned. He's going to time this nicely. The Pathogen Gland's going to finish just before the Infestors do. Still have some very nice, very early high-energy Infestors. He's also going right to Hive Tech while producing a Spire, so we could see a very early switch over to Brewlords or something like that if Druby can hold off a pretty significant force with his MMM ball. He is loading up two drops right now. Full of Marauders, both of those. He's going to send those over to the top left-hand corner. And frankly, that could be pretty effective. It is going to pull a lot of these units out of position. Uh, the units that are up for both players are not the most mobile in the world. Select is going to have to rely on Optic Zero to take care of this completely because he won't really be able or want to unseize himself and leave all of this exposed. I do wow. love this <laughs> barracks wall that just went up underneath that gold, though. That is very cute pretty slick and there's no banelings or anything on the field so he should be fine with that until cats has looks like soon he's going to be in double digit infester counts and he can just spam infested swarm eggs all over the other side mm -hmm. of the wall that's always fun to see as well but optic zero most likely going to lose his necklace in the next uh, six seven seconds <laughs> absolutely he's trying to ra rally in whatever he can though the necklace is down to less than 100 points of health a couple good force fields go down it does separate uh, one or two of those marauders can you get him he's got nine points of health don't leave him behind there we go. Don't leave him hanging. Exactly. Let's go time. Manor, Druby. Manor. <laughs> All right. And we do have another Nexus coming up now for Optic Zero. That's funny because Marauders say, don't leave me hanging. And they also say, it's go time. So <laughs> that's, that's good. So Cats, just expanding everywhere again. Soon he's going to have the whole bottom right half quarter of the map, I guess. But uh, lots of investors there, as you can see, just gathering their precious energy, waiting to encounter all these Marines and Tier 1 units that Optic Zero's got. But uh, all these tanks, he's, he might want to get Neural Parasite, but he's getting that Greater Spire now. There's Neural Parasite, actually, as soon as I say it. And this is going to be cool because I've seen Spanishua do the Zerg Siege push with Infestor Broodlord Queen. Mm -hmm. And I think with the added mobility of Druby's Stimmable Marines <laughs> in the mix, that's just going to be insane. Like, yeah. if Druby just hands Cat's control of his Marines and, like, uh, Cat basically just does whatever he wants, it, it can be really, really interesting with that extra mobility from the Marines. Yeah, that's going to be pretty beautiful, actually, because look at the amount of investors he already has. He's going to be able to trap as many units as he wants. Oh, wow, Greater Spire. i got to say, this is an extremely well-prepared 2v2 team right here. I'm not trying to take anything away from Subsons or anything like that. They've got very good ideas as well. They're obviously some of the world's very best players. I have nothing but respect for these guys. But what we see here are, are real honest-to-god great timings out of everyone. I mean, Katz finished his Corruptors at exactly the moment his Greater Spire did. That coincided nicely with the Neural Parasite finishing up on all these Infestors. And all at once, they're going to have this giant timing push available to them um, that's going to be extremely high-tech units that are going to be very powerful against what they see out of their opponents. So, I'm just really impressed so far with what I've seen out of uh, the movie. Yeah, Kat's just sacrificing a handful of links just to see what's where. If he does see that, obviously, Planetary Torch is morphing over from Select. Not sure where these overlords are headed. They don't have any speed yeah. or anything. Oh, there's a mothership. <laughs> there's a mothership in production Hooray! right now for Optic Zero. Totally missed Fleet the Fleet Beacon. Beacon. Yeah, there it is. And uh, it looks like Select, on the other hand, is starting to make some Hellions now as well as Vikings. Getting upgrades on all kinds of things. He just got the building armor upgrade finished up there too. So the fort fight is a huge bear as well. Yeah, Cat's not sure if that was even intentional, but now he's going to lose some overlords as a result. Or Optic Zero won't, won't kill those because there's are lords at the uh, the uh, bear wall right now. Yeah, absolutely. And here comes that siege push now. So Cat's moving up. The lords are going to do so much damage. Uh, no upgrades yet for Ruby. That will change in a bit. And look at this. Ruby already prepared to take down a number of these Void Rays with the Viking count that he has prepared. He's got to run back. He'll probably pull back to these uh, Fungals as well. Oh, yeah. Look we'll at that going down. These uh, Void Rays are just melting at the moment. These Broodlords are able to do whatever damage they want. They've completely blown this wall wide open. Yeah, and actually, uh, Select and uh, Optic Zero, they do have a lot of fighting units left alive. They don't really have any positioning at all right Pull back into Siege Rain. The, those super mobile Marines that we mentioned earlier are going to help out as well. But losing all those Void Rays basically just set them back so far that I'm not sure what they're going to be able to do now if we uh, just move up a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's the bulk of the Subsun forces. It's these Siege 
tanks, but Ruby has basically the full number of about those in here. Neural Parasite on a Viking uh, right now to chase away selects on an Air Force. That's fantastic. I love it, actually. So I going to lose this Orbital Command one fire volley from the Vikings, and that does go down. So Select now going to rely on the Siege Tank with no real anti-air to go after any Mother of these. Uh-oh. Oh, we even slowing down my computer just okay. a second there, but that's okay. There's Optic Zero now. He's going to cloak all of these units, and we'll see if we get a Neural Parasite going down on this Mothership, or if they're going to be able to get in range to be able to pull that off. Here comes Katso. He's moving up with his investors immediately. You see Optic Zero backing up that Mothership. There's the scan going down to these Units aren't going to be revealed here. Druby has done a significant amount of damage, and the mothership goes down. Man, scans, buckles, mass Vikings, all the things the mothership never wants to see, and then just gets killed off before he can really be effective. So, like, all he really did is get backwards with his siege tanks. So, there's a huge gaping hole on the right side of the map that Druby has to just move over to, even if they wanted to. So, right now, this is the beginning of the end. Optic Zero says, want to run early game. I don't know if that's a mind game or not, uh, sending that to all chat instead of uh, just as me. So that's the end of that game. GG from Sub Suns. Assassins take a 1 0 lead. And this is a best of. This is three a still, best of right? three, I okay. believe. Yes, we'll get word on that uh, from the admins if we're wrong, of course. I if yeah. we're wrong, they will let us know. But yeah, there we are. So game number one in the books. We're going to head to the next one here momentarily when everyone.